Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. I'm working on a special project. I'm doing a shoebox swap with three of my friends who are coming to spend the weekend with me, and we are going to craft till we can't craft anymore. So we are going to do a shoebox swap, and I wanted to do a fancy fold. It, it is not, I'm not a fancy folder as a rule. And I picked a really complicated one because we just recently did a thinking of you card using some really cool retired Christmas paper. And it is one that I want to get documented, um, but it needs to be a little more than a walkthrough. So this is the card. It actually uh, is a square. It arrives all compressed. It has a belly band that goes around it, that holds it all together, that you slide off, and when you slide it off, it kind of opens up, somewhat floral looking, and there's what it looks like all flattened with some room for you to write your greeting on the inside. I have a question out to the North Carolina Demos Group for a name for this card. I never even thought to ask the instructor. It is just one of the TGO card makers who comes in here every other week and teaches us to make cards. This card was completely constructed with all of the pieces scored and cut. I never asked her what the card was called and I didn't ask for any instructions. So I took it upon myself to deconstruct what you see here into some very simple instructions, easy to repeat. And I don't know what to call it. I've looked every way I can think of it on Pinterest and couldn't find any pins out there at all for something this complicated. The explosion boxes, explosion cards, pop-up cards, origami cards, all of those words that I was thinking might work came up with far simpler cards than this, which, as it is, we've got, I believe, 16 small triangles, four large triangles, and then a four inch square background for the focal layer. Four inches, three and a quarter inches for the mat, or my version has a little bit thinner mat, and then a three inch white that you get to stamp your sentiment with a belly band that is made from a strip of one inch by eight and a half. The base of this card is eight and a half square. So it has some nice easy cuts. I've got a PDF already started and I will have the PDF downloadable up on my website. But today what we're gonna do is simply go through the, the cuts and the scores. The first thing I wanna do is score a base. And I, I hardly use this. This is the full top, full size scoreboard. I use a mini scoreboard that I just um, slide in and out of my craft bag. So this full size scoreboard, I didn't even know it has these three um, little movable indicators that help you know where you're going to uh, score at. The lines, the way I have found, and if you know how to do this card, you can tell me that my instructions are all wrong, but I just went with, for me, the simplest set of instructions, which is, you've got square line, or straight lines, down, two down, and two across, with a four inch um, hole in the middle, actually four and a quarter. And then you have a bunch of diagonal lines to make the triangles. So for me, the easiest way is to start doing the straight line. The four straight line scores are all done at two and one eighth. So you score two and an eighth, rotate a quarter turn, rinse and repeat until you have all four of your straight lines done. Then you rotate your eight and a half inch square until the point is at six and the side is at six. From here, you see these little indicators. There's a one and a half inch and a three inch. And if you look closely, 
let's see if I can get a little angle so that you can see the the score lines that you want to hit are these two lines here that are the two and an eighth top and side you want the one and a half inch score that you make to line up perfectly so that you are completing the triangle at the two and an eighth side and two and an eighth along the bottom rotated 90 degrees so first line done at one and a half the next line you want to make sure that you are intersecting the two and an eighth and the two and an eighth where they cross which is when you have your points at six, that is at the three inch mark. So you just score at three inches. I actually picked three inches by starting my score line here at the middle and then went up. And that's how I discovered that it was at the three inch mark. So that's all you have are three, three different measurements on the scoreboard, one and a half, two and an eighth and three. The two and an eighth are on the square, and the one and a half and the three are on the diagonal. So now that I have finished my one and a half and three inch diagonal lines, I rotate. I rinse and repeat like I did the square lines for a full four sets of lines at one and a half and three inches. And that then makes up your full base pattern. From here, you will take your paper. I am not going to do that on this paper. This is just my, my workup paper. You will fold back and forth to make your folds pliable either direction. So you just go through the whole thing until these fibers in the paper are soft and pliable and you can just fold it every which way you want to go. Next, you're going to cut your pattern and what I advise this particular one to make it simple for the class and to make it consistent was a nice busy pattern that has nothing regular it doesn't have any ombre it's just a full sheet of pattern and I think it would be a really fun project to make your own background doing a random full 12 by 12 pattern uh, this is double-sided DSP, so if it just so happens that the back side is an inverse of this, which mine was, well, no, mine wasn't, um, because the one side of this DSP is gold and the other side is a solid. So we were given an extra piece that had a solid it was vertical pattern, and I chose to use the dark evening evergreen with the gold foil pattern. I was a little bit of a rebel, but the rest of this pattern is all the same. And, and there wasn't any, we were just given these triangles in a, in a little envelope. And so it just, there was no uh, need to have to really line them all up in any way to trying to match up the patterns. So whatever pattern you choose, I highly recommend that it be a busy pattern with no regular feel to it so that you can just take all of these pieces and not have to keep track of them because 16 tiny triangles is a lot to keep track of. So from there, uh, we went ahead and you we always use glue in our class. So because this is opening and closing all the time, I think you could get away with using adhesive runner in the middle, but I would go ahead and glue the triangles so that the card will last a good long time with lots of opening and closing. My favorite glue, um, having tried lots of different glues over the years, is Art Glitter, the clear version, and it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So when you apply it, um, I went ahead and just applied it around the edges and then I did a squiggle in the middle, and then when you apply it, you get a little bit of movement before it sticks and it does not dry sticky like mono glue which is the other adhesive this is the stampin up uh adhesive and it this is sticky and so i don't prefer to use it for 
applying paper to paper. I use the mono glue mainly for like sequins and yes, doing little die cuts. Uh, but now that I have this, I've been using this for doing all of that and just save the mono glue for things that are a little bit smaller than what you would want to use a dot um, for, an adhesive dot. All right, so you glued it all down and then you've already got it all back moving so that you can fold it up into this lovely pattern. You can choose to have it hidden so that you have the belly band and they don't have any indication of what the card is. You can then choose to fold the flaps back so that they can see what the pattern is. When you apply the belly band, what I recommend is that you, it's eight and a half at one inch wide, then you have a strip of eight inch because you get an eight inch extra piece when you are cutting all of these materials. Notice this is that green with the foil. So it is a piece left over from the cut with the big four inch square. And so it is a little bit shorter on either side. And when you look at the band, the band does not meet all the way in the middle. And you also want to give it some breathing room. So don't snug it up really tight when you fold it over. I uh, don't think you need to score it. You just need to lay it down, put the card in the middle, and then slowly fold over nice and loose. This is a four inch, four and a quarter inch card going into like a five inch square envelope. So make sure you give a little bit of room on either side so that it's easy to slip on and off. And then I want to share with you the card that I made because I actually made it a little more complicated and I devised a pattern for my particular card. And it is a spring themed card that is using dandy designs, I believe is what the paper is called, is a free celebration paper. And so here it is. This is how I have it belly band wrapped so that you can see right off the bat that there is a polka dot pattern and then a floral pattern on the outside. You'll also notice that I changed up my belly band is a complementary color. It does not match the base. And my front of my belly band label is yet a third color. So I have a lot of color going on as well as this, these lovely gold foil die cuts. I cut the label pieces. I have instructions on that. I'm going to do a separate video on how to actually cut this. I used the postage punch. So when you open mine up, it is a birthday card and it uses four pieces of the small um, triangles. It uses purple floral four small triangles eight total polka dot triangles and four large floral triangles with yet another a fourth pattern for the background so the cuts that i have i've listed them and then this is all going to be on a pdf that you will be able to download so taking i only did this work to efficiently use a 12 by 12 starting at the top left of the 12 by 12 you're going to trim a four inch length of it so you have four by 12 on the first strip and you are going to take, and this is if you want to be able to use the flip side for your focal layer. Uh, so if it works out that you have the busy on the one side and the flip side is going to be your base, that's what this first piece is for. And it is a four by four, leaving you a four by eight, which you are going to trim down to three by eight. And from there, you are going to make these four big triangles that are going to be two and five eighths by two and five eighths. And you need two of those. And this is actually not making the busy pattern. You'll have to figure out your cuts for the busy pattern. I am giving you the cuts for making a card out of one piece of 12 by 12 that the front one side is the busy pattern and the other side is is your background pattern just flipping it over so you'll have to do some of your own math to figure out if you want to use a mixing and matching of various pieces
So I'm going to bring this green one back because that's what I am working out for you is you've got your two two and five eighths that give you four large triangles. You then are going to trim off from that three and by eight you're going to have a one by eight left over. That is your belly band piece, which is this inner piece. You're going to trim that from one, one by eight to three quarters by eight. The next piece down is going to be one and seven, eight by 12, and you're going to do two of those. So you're going to take one and seven eighths by 12 and trim that into th six one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. So you'll have a little tiny strip that you will, oh, you won't have the little, you'll have a little tiny rectangle on the end that is left over as a scrap. Then the second one and seven eighths by 12, you only need two more one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths to make up the rest of your small triangles of which you need 16. From there, you get a scrap left over of four and an eighth by 12 that you can just put to the side and you can either use it for another project like this or just put it back in your stash. From there you've got your eight one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. You're going to cut those diagonally and then you have your two two and five eighths. You cut those diagonally and you have all of your triangles cut. You have your belly band pieces cut. When you cut the belly band piece it is going to be one inch by eight and a half and you will have your eight and a half by eight and a half so that's going to be um, you will have a couple inch remnant that will not be long enough to do your mat layer if you want to do a mat layer you'll have to grab another piece which I did I had a I cut my pieces down from the eight and a half by eleven down to a two size which is four and a quarter by five and a half and from there I trimmed down my I did a three and three sixteenths square instead of a three and a quarter square because I wanted my mat to be a little bit thinner. So my mat came out a little bit thinner and I actually even wouldn't have minded it a tiny bit thinner than that. So that's all I've got. Again, I will have the PDF which has all of the measurements. It will have some pictures to help you, but I really think that you need to see the scoring to just have it be the most efficient way to score. From here, I have one last thing to share with you, and that is I've shown you how to score using the full-size, old-fashioned, regular old scoreboard. However, the Stampin' Up! trimmer also works very well. It has a score and cut, so... Here, I wanna make sure this doesn't slide. The light brown here is for scoring. I even labeled it score. I'm going to open it up and give you just a quick demo of how you would use this for scoring and how you would use it for cutting your triangles also because it works really well for that. So you've got your eight and a half by eight and a half. All you have to do here is do two and an eighth. Have your score at the top. Take your brown cut. Be sure that the cut is all the way out of the way. You can even pull it up at the top here. It gets a little wider and you can pull the cut off if you need to to make sure you don't accidentally touch it. But in my case, you could even tape it. You could take some washi and just tape it down here so you do not accidentally cut it. But I like the word score works for me. So you do your two and an eighth. What you get for the top and the bottom is you've got this middle line here that also repeats the two and one eighth, so you can make sure you're straight. And then you score, rotate, do all four of your two and an eighth square scores first. Then to do your your diagonal scores, you're going to take and you're going to go to one and one half with your point. One and one half is right here you're going to put it on this center line and the best way that I have found to make sure that you are on if you didn't have this line here which is kind of a cheat is to make sure that at two lines in that you are lined up e evenly right there's where they intersect 
and right there's where they intersect so you can move it a little bit you really really want to be exact and then you will get to close if you need to use washi tape to tape this down do so if not all you have to do and what I did is I just made sure that I held the paper with my fingers when I did my scores make sure it says score so you don't cut it or you will be sad and you'll have to start all over so only use the score same thing for the three inch go to the three inches have it wide open you are going to then find a line along here that you can match the intersection lines they have to match up so I'm seeing this this tri triangle shape and that triangle shape and then you can even just take your finger and make sure they line up perfectly. If you guys have a different way to do this on this trimmer, let me know. But that's just what I did when I was figuring out I did one of each way. I actually had to make uh, four of the three of these bases for other people plus the one for myself and this was my demo so I did this enough times that I was able to do a couple on the scoreboard then I thought I'm gonna bring out my trimmer and see if it can actually do this and I actually found that the trimmer because I used the trimmer more than a scoreboard that it was actually easier for me to figure out how to then be able to do my scores so again once you've get your three inches you rotate it you line up your three inches you check that you are centered now keep in mind once you've done all of your one and one halves and you have all four of them you then have a line that you can use as a point of reference so I would recommend you do all your two and a half or one and a halves first rotate one and a half rotate one and a half boom then when you do your threes you are giving yourself a line to work with and it goes really fast so that's all I got. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns on this video or over on my blog. If you have a clever name for this or you have seen this on Pinterest, you can go ahead and send me the pin and the name because I am curious what you guys think the name is. And then hopefully I will get some feedback. I had just posted the request on the Facebook group right before I did this video. So hopefully by now I actually have some responses. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to see more videos like this. And as always, thanks for watching.